Size matters. I'm not saying bigger is better, but you definitely get more bush if you got a bigger trunk. And when it comes to the military, the single largest and heaviest piece of equipment is an aircraft carrier. Size is one of the determining factors in how seriously we take an aircraft carrier. And even though technically the US Navy only has 11 aircraft carriers, there are another 9 aircraft carrying ships in the US Navy. It's just that they go by a different name. They are called amphibious assault ships. And as you can tell by the name, they are very different from the traditional supercarriers. But why the United States has two different types of aircraft carriers, why those carriers are used by separate branches of the military, the reason they rarely work together, and why doubling the size of a ship does not double its volume is not what you think. Take a look at these two carriers side by side. At a glance, one is obviously bigger than the other. But the question is, how much bigger and what difference does that make? On average, American supercarriers are 1,092 feet long, while amphibious assault ships are typically around 850 feet long. That difference may not seem that significant when measuring flight decks, but it says a lot about the intended function of each ship. For example, the amphibious assault ships use their decks more like a landing pad than a runway, which means only aircraft capable of vertical takeoff and landing, such as the F-35B, AV-8B Harrier, V-22 Osprey, and other helicopters can operate on these vessels. It's for this reason that the official designation of these ships is LHD or LHA, which stands for Landing Helicopter Dock or Landing Helicopter Assault. When the aviation wing of these ships perform a mission, it's to provide short-term support to smaller landing craft and ground forces nearby, since helicopters and harriers do not have the range to maintain constant airspace dominance. This is in direct contrast to how the US Navy uses its supercarriers. A Nimitz or Ford-class carrier is more like a floating airport than a ship. That extra length of deck space allows supercarriers to launch heavier, fixed-wing aircraft like the F-18 Hornets and the E-2 Hawkeye, in addition to aircraft launched by amphibious assault ships. These heavier airplanes serve important missions related to maintaining air dominance, performing reconnaissance and electronic warfare in contested airspaces, as well as providing continuous support to ground forces, which further reinforces the long-term nature of supercarrier missions. But it's not just what's on the surface of these ships that matters. You see, the length of a ship directly impacts its most important physical property, volume. The sheer difference in volume between supercarriers and LHDs is so great that it impacts every aspect of their mission. Take for example the fact that the larger a ship is, the more easily it moves through the water. This may seem counterintuitive, but it's due to something known as the square cube law. Basically, when increasing the dimensions of an object, its volume always increases much faster than its surface area. This is why doubling the size of a ship doesn't double its volume. It increases it eightfold. When ships are scaled up in size, their volume, which determines their displacement or buoyancy, increases faster than their surface area, which determines the resistance or friction experienced in the water. This is why, even though the difference in ship length between the supercarriers and the LHD is only 340 feet, the overall difference in volume makes the supercarriers far more efficient at moving through water as it experiences less surface friction proportional to its volume. This results in greater fuel and energy efficiency for larger ships. But it also means that the amount of aviation fuel and supplies that the ships carry would increase exponentially. This significantly extends the mission duration for a carrier and its air wing before the need for underway replenishment. Take into consideration that all of the bombs, missiles, and other weapons carried by combat aircraft are stored in the magazines deep within a carrier's hull for protection. With the difference in volume, the supercarrier can carry about 375,000 cubic feet of ordnance 
while amphibious assault ships are maxed out at only 16,000 cubic feet. This means a supercarrier can perform up to two weeks of continuous operations at full capacity without needing a munitions restock, while an amphibious assault ship would deplete its fighting capability in only one week with just six aircraft. That said, an amphibious ready group, which is made up of three ships, is able to be completely self-sufficient for 15 days of continuous operations. You can't deny the size advantages, but bigger is not always better. Sometimes a smaller vessel gets the job done better. And if that put a smile on your face, you're in for a treat with this next bit, because it's sponsored by Manscaped. What are women's second favorite toys? your crown jewels. And that's why more than 8 million men trust Manscaped with keeping their avocados fresh and presentable. And all you need comes bundled in Performance Package 4.0. Starting with Lawnmower 4.0, this fourth generation electric trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade and a 4000K LED spotlight. The convenient cordless charging gives you up to 90 minutes to groom yourself below the waist. And because Lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof, you can do all of it in the shower so there's no mess left behind. Triple tap the button in the front to turn on travel lock, so there's no accidental buzzing in your luggage. But we're not done. This package comes with Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant for an all-day body odor protection, and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray for a quick refresh. It might even increase how often your crop is harvested. And those pesky hairs in your nose and ears are no match for Weed Whacker 2.0 with a 7000 RPM motor. And if all that wasn't enough, Manscaped also throws in two free gifts the Shed Travel Bag and the Anti-Chafing Boxers. Honestly, these are probably the best pair of boxers that I own. They are breathable and feel great on my skin. So go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off, plus free international shipping when you use promo code THINK20 at checkout. Your balls will thank you, and so will we. Even though the LHD class of carriers have a much smaller carrying capacity than its big sister, it can deploy forces both above and below the deck. This is thanks to its well deck, which is an internal housing bay that can carry either 3 hovercraft, 12 mechanized landing craft, or 40 amphibious assault vehicles, depending on the mission. This ability paired with the variety of VTOL aircraft that a ship can deploy makes LHDs far more suited for quick reaction missions with smaller but more intense operational timelines. In 2016, the U.S. conducted airstrikes over Libya in the support of the UN-backed government in Tripoli. Instead of deploying and therefore tying up a full-size supercarrier to support these air operations, the Navy sent the amphibious assault ship USS Wasp to perform continuous strikes as part of Operation Odyssey Lightning. This turned out to be a cost-effective solution where using a smaller ship for a smaller operation made sense. But even with the ability to deploy VTOL aircraft, the LHD class of ships was never intended to serve as aircraft carriers, despite having landing decks. Their primary task is to transport and support marine expeditionary units in large enough quantities to perform a successful landing and secure a beachhead. Marine expeditionary units are like the Swiss Army knife of the US military. They are quick reaction forces that can handle anything, anywhere, anytime, from humanitarian missions after natural disasters to keeping an adversary occupied long enough for the U.S. Army or Air Force to mobilize and respond. For example, when the U.S. forces were deployed to Kabul for the withdrawal from Afghanistan, the first two battalions to show up were Marines. LHDs are thus not suited for long-term operations far from shore, meaning they cater much closer to the mission of the U.S. Marine Corps as opposed to that of the U.S. Navy. Because of this, even though the ship is operated by the Navy, the majority of the over 2,700 personnel aboard are actually Marines, and only a small fraction are sailors. This means that even though the Navy owns the ship, it's the Marine Corps that specializes in using it, and all of the pilots on board are Marines, not sailors. This makes amphibious assault ships more like a floating marine base rather than the traditional floating airport that supercarriers are known for. 
due to the differences in design and functionality, we also rarely ever see supercarriers and LHDs on patrol together. When a supercarrier travels, it never goes alone. It always has a complement of cruisers and destroyers around to protect it, as well as a submarine attached to patrol. Spoiler alert, the US Navy is getting rid of its cruisers, which are responsible for controlling the airspace around the carrier strike group. Destroyers will be taking over that role in the coming years. Supercarriers also almost always perform underway replenishment to ensure they never have to risk stopping at a port for supplies. This operational model means that supercarriers act as a whole fleet command center with an admiral on board who commands the surrounding ships in the strike group. This directly contrasts the way LHDs travel since they function independently and are more focused on transporting a marine unit from point A to point B. When an LHD arrives at its destination, it will often resupply at a nearby port as opposed to replenishment at sea, even though they do have that option for longer missions. So if amphibious assault ships are meant for projecting land forces and supercarriers are meant for projecting air power, why do the two get compared so often? Well, the reason for the confusion is because of the latest addition to the U.S. Navy's fleet of amphibious assault ships, the America-class Landing Helicopter Assault Ship, or LHA, which introduced two major changes, first of which was their size. With a displacement of about 45,000 tons, America-class LHAs have a bigger displacement than the French aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle. In addition to their larger size, two of the America-class LHAs were optimized for flight operations, and to do that, their well deck was omitted in order to allow more room for aircraft, their spare parts, weapons, and their fuel. America-class LHAs put more focus on accommodating even more aircraft than their predecessors. These ships are currently being built with a focus on carrying F-35B Lightning aircraft as their main combat component, earning them the nickname of Lightning Carriers. But with these new LHA ships blurring the line between assault ships and traditional aircraft carriers, it makes you wonder, why have both LHAs and supercarriers if aircraft technology has become advanced enough to make smaller landing decks more effective? Well, the answer is pretty simple. It's all about using the right tool for the right job. Sometimes you need a massive sledgehammer to break something down. Other times, you just need a ball-peen hammer to drive in a nail. With aircraft carriers, the cost of swinging the hammer is billions of dollars. On average, LHDs cost $2 billion, LHAs cost $3.4 billion, and supercarriers cost over $13 billion just to build. Add to that the cost of operating one supercarrier, which is nearly $1 billion per year. The US Navy and Marine Corps are just trying to continue to look for creative ways to expand the force projection without breaking the bank. It's not that the US Navy has a size problem or is trying to overcompensate for something with bigger ships. They just want to have the right tool for the right job. <laughs>